In August of 1951, seven defendants, who came to be called the Hawaii Seven, were arrested for violation of the Smith Act. This act forbade the teaching or advocacy of the violent overthrow of the United States government and was used as a means of criminal prosecution of alleged communists across America. In Hawaii, among the accused were Jack Hall, regional director of the ILWU, John Reinecke, former schoolteacher, Charles Fujimoto, soil chemist, Eileen Fujimoto, former ILWU secretary, Dwight James Freeman, mechanic, Jack Kimoto, employee of the Honolulu Record, and Koji Ariyoshi, former Army lieutenant and editor of the Honolulu Record. The seven were defended by Richard Gladstein of San Francisco as chief counsel, Abraham Weirin of the American Civil Liberties Union of Southern California, and Boslog and Simons. Gladstein kept Harriet out of the courtroom and limited her job to doing research. None of them would let me say a goddamn thing. What Harriet could not say in court, she said in other ways. Her pamphlet, Fear, documents the serious erosion of civil rights during this era. Several weeks ago, a story came out in the newspapers that the ink on the Declaration of Independence and the ink on the Constitution was fading. A great concern was expressed, and these documents were embalmed in chemicals so that the ink would not fade. The danger in the United States today is not that the ink on the Declaration of Independence is fading, the ink on the Constitution. The danger is that officials of government are destroying the substance of these documents. Most other lawyers uh, distanced themselves from people who handled the kinds of cases and represented the kind of clients that Harriet did. And Harriet went beyond that, of course. She didn't just represent them in court. She went out and encouraged them by giving speeches. Uh, she uh, pushed the limits, certainly, in terms of the content and the nature of those speeches. And those were fiery speeches. It was the content of one particular speech that led Harriet into a battle, not only for herself, but for the rights of all practicing lawyers.